Activision Blizzard is like the Harlem Globetrotters of destroying franchises with their tier 3 grifting. They can do it flipping backwards from full court going between the legs. They'll dunk on your damn unborn child. They'll steal the titty milk out of the hands of your born child. They'll destroy a franchise then sell it scout for $20 in a separate franchise that they've destroyed. They don't give a damn. And I'd be angry if I wasn't so damn impressed. I mean, what really is $150 in the grand scheme of things? It's just the way it is. Which leads us to the Modern Warfare 3 campaign. Over the last decade, Call of Duty's multiplayer has stolen from more parents than San Franciscans have stolen from Walgreens, even in spite of their rampant budget cuts. But the campaigns were mostly sheltered from Bobby's greedy little hands because I honestly think he forgets they even put campaigns into these games. I know you did. Which leads me to my point. An article came out recently exposing Modern Warfare 3, and I think it says when Bobby went to flip his Modern Warfare 2 map pack and multiplayer update into a whole new $70 game, whole new game. Somebody told him, you know, we still have to make a campaign. Then he said, when did we ever do that? And after much negotiation, they shat this out in a reported one and a half years to meet the bare minimum requirements. That's my guess, at least. Bloomberg wants me to pay for the article and I'm not doing all that, so I just freestyled the news report for you. Let me know what you think. Think about it. Regardless, Modern Warfare 3's campaign falls flatter than a Diablo 4 character. I would call it an asset flip, but I looked up the definition and it turns out it's not that. But if you thought Modern Warfare 3 looked like a bad Modern Warfare 2 DLC, then you wouldn't be alone because the PlayStation 5 agrees. <laughs> <laughs> this is the type of Call of Duty that makes people afraid to say they like Call of Duty. Any Call of Duty. Now when people say they like Black Ops, they gotta go full Helen Keller pretending like the series died after that. And let me be clear, I don't blame them because Modern Warfare 3 is the most soulless, padded, limiting, gutless, brief, and bastardized version of a franchise that has already diluted its DNA more than British royalty. Let's start with the positives though because I'm a positive guy. The stadium mission ain't bad. I think the Starship Troopers quote is neat. Come on you apes, you wanna live forever! Oh, sorry about that. I, I got carried away thinking about a better game. Thank you for hearing out the positives. Now let's move into the negatives. Activision, pimp! What the hell is this Marvel intro doing here? You guys didn't even put the good ones in here. This is... I, I'm not angry. I'm just confused. Did you guys just relate to the struggle of putting out shitty sludge every year? Black Girl Magic! Next up, this game's got more fluff than a Build-A-Bear. You can tell that they made maybe four real missions and then filled out the rest of the game with quick and easy time sucks to top it over their requisite three hours of gameplay. Most notably, what they call New Open Combat Missions. They hype you up with this big cutscene, these fancy cutscenes they do now, then go Weapons free, soldier. We still have one too many arses and had to reallocate the budget from this mission into settling court cases. It's just the way it is. Bravo 6 <laughs> Then you hold F, hold F, and hold F, traversing around a small open world as you occasionally shoot the odd chromy homey deficient AI. It just feels like you're wandering around completing a grocery list rather than participating in an action movie. If I wanted to play a worse version of DMZ, I'd go play Tarkov, Bobby. And it's even more insulting when they put these lazy PvE missions on a cutout part of the Warzone map. <laughs> they do this like fucking four times. In fact, you start this cut content campaign on a cutout piece of the Warzone map. <laughs> <laughs> then they have the goal to stretch out the campaign even more by making a shield basher character that corrupts your save and forces you to restart? Bobby, I haven't seen anyone mailing a bomb like this since Teddy Boy was on the loose. Which leads me to my next point. This new no Russian scene is an atrocity. Christ on a cracker! For $35 million, you guys should have really grabbed a pair of balls because evidently you lost yours. Remember. No Russian. I'll admit, when they hinted at the no Russian scene in the after credits of Modern Warfare 2 like it was a Howard the Duck cameo, I got a little chubbed up. I'll also admit, originally I had a 20 page, not quite a script, not quite an essay, more of a manifest, oh rant, about the new no Russian scene here, but instead I've shortened it to the least psychopathic five sentences that I could muster at about 2 a.m. You ready? Now you play as someone that gets an S vest forcibly strapped to her while on a plane, it clacks off, and when it does, they flash to white. Try to style on any passenger before that and it'll just immediately fail the mission if they Give even the let call. you shoot. In fact, you should really just set down your controller during this mission and let the game play it for you because it will completely impactless. What made the original so impactful was that it forced the player to redirect dozens of passengers flights to the afterlife because you were secretly a fed within Makarov's gang that had to maintain their cover. They wanted to rub your nose in it, really make you feel like shit, then make it all not matter in the end anyway. 
anyways. Now, did I feel bad personally? Nah, I'm just doing my job. Damn, what? Next, we're gonna say Best Buy employees should feel like shit for selling TVs? <laughs> In conclusion, the new No Russian is made for a modern audience of feds that they didn't want to hurt the fee-fees of. Think about it. Next up, check out this unbroken window that's shooting bullets everywhere. Pretty cool, huh? Following that, this game has no momentum. One of the best parts about the old Modern Warfare games was how they chained together mission after mission and the action had just never stopped. The No Russian level leads into shooting poor Brazilian people and now here we are protecting the burger town. And Modern Warfare 3 is like they designed a highway full of speed bumps. First, you play as a geriatric trying not to break a hip. By the way, this mission is just five minutes of walking. Stop walking to stare at a rock and they'll shoot you dead. Oh, what a stealth mission. Then you set your controller down for the No Russian mission. And after that, they hype you up like this is it. Then go. A weapons free soldier. Another titty got smacked, so we defunded this mission as well. It's just the way it is. Bravo 6, going dark. <laughs> If I wanted to go be bored off my ass bumbling through the dark, I'd go play Not Alan Wake 2. And then what slows it down even more is this dude LARPing like he's at gunpoint. There are no others. Only me. My brother in Christ, there's no one there. Speaking of gameplay though, depending on the mission, we're right back to Spider Monkey coked up movement with one AC-130 mission mixed in there as your sole variety. You don't even have a single slow motion breach. You can't even shoot a man in a bathtub. What do we- And then there's Warzone armor plating on you and the enemies on top of that. Warzone chests on top of that. Hell no, I evaded Warzone successfully for this long. You're not dragging me into that shit heap. Uh, Robocop palate cleanser. <laughs> Then we have my next problem. Would you just fucking kill Ghost already? I swear to God, is he just gonna be hanging out brooding in the corner with us for the next 10 Modern Warfare games? Listen, I get that you need a headliner for the box art, but Christ almighty, I mean, I got better ideas. I got bigger ideas. Stashless Shepard needs to grow a stash and kill this man already so that we can go on a revenge mission and kill him. A little bit of emotion in here. Instead of, oh great, we hunted him down and get to put him on trial. Oh, tell me I get to choose the jury. Pretty, pretty please, brother. Then on top of that, somehow Graves returned after we blew him sky fucking high. Oh, I, I didn't see that one coming. Graves probably isn't dead. I saw that one coming. I give this campaign a one out of five as in it's about 20% finished. But other than that, oh wait, hang on, no, right. What many people are dubbing Makarov Shapiro comes in in a second mission after the game already looked like it was over. Then he goes, uh, what if hypothetically, uh, 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 for the sake of the argument, shots open the head. Refuses to elaborate and leaves. There is no, oh, no, 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 stop. It just feels like Activision ended the game, then went, oh, fuck, we forgot to kill Soap. Then contrived a final, final mission where they do it in the most unceremonious, soulless way ever. Also, that they can sell you the revenge mission that they'll sell in the next DLC that they turn into a $70 game. But hey, while you're here, let me tell you about the multiplayer. I do believe it was Leviticus Dracula Flow 3 that stated, They must have amnesia. Amnesia. They forgot that I'm him. He is him. Testify. 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 One last thing, this new music blows. There used to be emotion in these scores. Now even they're so embarrassed of it that they play it at negative 50 decibels in the background. Captain, the bomb. How do we stop it? To play us out, here's a real war classic. Thanks to the flock of pimps for generously funding this video, and another huge thanks to all the pimperers. I got a whole lot more bullshit coming at you very soon. Stay tuned.